supraventricular, tachycardius, SVT, involve at least some part of the atrium or atrioventricular junction. SVT is a very common group of arrhythmias which develops as a result of abnormal automaticity, triggered activity, or re-entry mechanism. It is characterized by a rapid heart rate, 120 to 200 beats per minute, and a rhythmic succession of QRS complex. The QRS complex duration is typically narrow, less than 120 milliseconds. Reflecting conduction over the AV node and his Purkinje system, but sometimes can have a wide QRS complex due to pre-existent or rate-dependent bundle branch blocks or other aberrant interventricular conduction disturbances. Both atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation are supraventricular tachycardias, but because of the differences in their mechanisms and clinical manifestations, they are grouped separately from other types of supraventricular tachycardias, commonly referred to as paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, PSVT. Based on the ECG criteria, supraventricular tachycardia can be classified into two types, short RP or long PR interval tachycardia, long RP or short PR interval tachycardia. Let us discuss about short RP or long PR interval in detail. A short RP tachycardia demonstrates a short RP pattern with P waves embedded within or occurring closely after the preceding QRS complex. The RP interval reflects the retrograde conduction time for an impulse to travel from ventricular to atrial tissue. A short RP tachycardia occurs with reentrant supraventricular tachycardia when the retrograde VA conduction time is shorter than the anterograde AV conduction time. Short PR tachycardia is further divided into atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia or AVNRT, and atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia, or AVRT. Let us now discuss about atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia. AVNRT is the most common paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia in adults. It is more common in women than in men. In patients with AVNRT, the atrioventricular junction has two or more functionally discrete pathways fast and slow pathway. The fast pathway conducts impulses rapidly, but has a relatively long effective refractory period. The slow pathway has a slow conduction velocity, but a shorter effective refractory period than the fast pathway. AVNRT is a reentrant tachycardia that involves the AV node. The retrograde conduction typically occurs along the fast pathways. As a result, the atria are reactivated during or shortly after ventricular activation. During typical AVNRT, the P waves falls on the ST segment or within the terminal part of the QRS complex. In most cases, the interval between ventricular and atrial activation, the VA intervals, thus less than 70 milliseconds. Based on the contribution of the fast and slow pathways in the antegrade and retrograde limbs, of the tachycardia circuit, AVNRT is classified into typical and atypical forms. Typical AVNRT. In typical AVNRT, a premature atrial depolarization or PAD conducts to the atrioventricular junction through the atrium. The PAD arrives at the AV node when the fast pathway is in a refractory state. Therefore, the impulse conducts antegrade via the slow pathway with a short refractory period. When the impulse reaches the end of the slow pathway, the fast pathway is ready for retrograde condition. Therefore, typical AVNRT is also called slow fast AVNRT. ECG characteristics for typical AVNRT include RP interval is very short. The P wave is usually hidden within the QRS complex or appears at the end of the QRS complex, may be present as pseudo-R in leads V1 or AVR and as pseudo-S in inferior leads or notching at the end of AVL. Atypical AVNRT. In atypical AVNRT, a premature atrial depolarization conducts to the atrioventricular junction 
through the atrium. It occurs when the antegrade conduction to the ventricle occurs via the fast pathway, while the retrograde conduction to the atrium is through the slow pathway. Therefore, a typical AVNRT is commonly called as fast-slow AVNRT. ECG characteristics for a typical AVNRT include RP interval is longer, P waves are manifested as negative deflections within the ST segment or shortly before the next QRS complex in the inferior leads. ECG characteristics for AVNRT include typical and atypical AVNRTs usually have a narrow QRS complex. However, concomitant bundle branch block BBB can rarely create a wide QRS complex. Several differences in ECG characteristics will help you to distinguish between typical and atypical AVNRTs. P-Wave. While analyzing the ECG of a patient with suspected AVNRT, you should first check the P-Wave morphology, width, location, and mechanism of initiation. The P-Wave axis is similar for both typical and atypical AVNRT. The P-Wave is inverted in inferior leads 2, 3, and AVF in both the types of AVNRT as the activation of the atria occurs in an inferior to superior direction. In the lead V1, the P wave is upright as the AV node, which is located posteriorly, causes posterior to anterior activation of the atria. The width of the P wave is different in two forms of AVNRT. In typical AVNRT, the P waves tends to narrow, whereas in atypical AVNRT, it is wider because of the difference in the anatomical location of the fast and slow conducting pathways that activate the atria. In typical AVNRT, the P wave is rarely visible on the ECG due to the simultaneous conduction of the ventricles through the slow pathway anterogradely and atria through the fast pathway retrogradely. Due to this, the P waves are inscribed in the QRS complex or occur near the QRS creating a short RP interval. RP interval is less than half the RR interval. This can sometimes manifest as a pseudo S wave in the inferior leads 2, 3, and AVF, and pseudo R wave in lead V1. In atypical AVNRT, P waves are clearly visible. Due to retrograde conduction through a slow pathway, the presence of the P wave occurs later than the QRS complex, resulting in a RP interval that is frequently longer than half the RR interval. In the given ECG strip, the heart rate is 144 beats per minute, which is indicative of tachycardia. The rhythm is regular as the RR interval between any two successive R waves is similar. The duration of the QRS complex is approximately less than 0.08 seconds, which indicates a narrow QRS complex. P waves are buried in the QRS interval. Pseudo R waves are present in the lead V1 and V2. Pseudo S waves are present in the lead 2, 3, and AVF. The PR interval cannot be measured as the P waves are not visible. The above ECG findings indicate that the patient has atrial ventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, AVNRT. AVRT is the second most common form of paroxysmal superventricular tachycardia. It is more common in males than in females. It is narrow complex tachycardia with a short PR interval. An accessory pathway connects the atria to the ventricles. The tachycardia is caused due to the reentry of impulses from the ventricles back to the atria, creating a self-sustained circuit. Delta waves are the pathological waves that can be seen as slurred upstroke at the beginning of the QRS complex. They are formed when the accessory pathway conducts the atrial impulse to the ventricle. Wolf-Parkinson-White WPW syndrome is a classic example of AVRT. WPW syndrome is characterized by the presence of delta waves, short PR interval, less than 120 milliseconds, and wide QRS complex. Delta waves are the slurred upstroke in the QRS complex. They are often associated with a short PR interval. It is most associated with a pre-excitation syndrome, such as WPW. AVRT is further classified into orthodromic AVRT and antidromic AVRT. 
orthodomic AVRT. It occurs when an impulse is conducted through the AV node and then through the accessory pathway in a retrograde direction. In this condition, AVRT is associated with narrow QRS complexes that have normal morphology. Sometimes a rate-related aberration may be present during which the QRS complexes will have a typical right or left bundle branch block, BBB morphology, or an intraventricular conduction delay. The ECG characteristics of orthodomic AVRT are presence of distinct P wave after the QRS complex, which allows us to differentiate between AVRT and AVNRT. During AVNRT, the P wave is hidden within, partly merging with or close to the QRS complex. Presence of retrograde P wave, which is closer to the preceding QRS complex than to the following QRS complex due to rapid conduction to the atria. RP interval is less than the PR interval. Antidromic AVRT. It occurs when the impulse is conducted anti-grade down the bypass tract. A direction myochondrial activation occurs in antidromic AVRT as ventricular activation is done through the accessory pathway and the normal his Pergingi system. Therefore, wide and abnormal QRS complexes that do not have either a typical right or left BBB morphology are associated with antidromic AVRT. In this condition, the QRS complexes resemble the pre-excited complexes during the sinus rhythm. The ECG characteristics of antidromic AVRT include QRS complexes are usually broader than during sinus rhythm and may resemble ventricular tachycardia due to slow conduction of impulse from one fiber to another. QRS complexes are followed by retrograde P waves. In the given ECG, the patient's heart rate is nearly 300 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular. The QRS complex is narrow, nearly 0.04 seconds. The P wave is followed by the QRS complex retrograde P waves present in the ST segment. They are visible as pseudo R or pseudo S wave. Delta wave is present. These findings indicate that the patient has orthodromic AVRT. Long RP tachycardia is characterized by an RP interval, which is longer than the next PR interval during tachycardia. This pattern occurs when the retrograde VA conduction time in reentrant arrhythmias is long due to a slowly conducting retrograde pathway during tachycardia. It consists of negative P waves in the inferior leads. It consists of the permanent form of junctional reciprocating tachycardia, PJRT. Let us now discuss about junctional tachycardia. 